All right, so people say to me, they come in the boss program, and let's say they knew, right? They knew. They say, Coach, what do I do? So I already told them, you know, let's start getting your story together and working on your story. That's the first thing we need to do. We talked about the ULEs. They got that going. They did their videos. Then they say, Coach, what? And so I always say to them, train. I need you to start training, right? And they're like, what, does tra- what do you mean train? So watch this. When I was in high school, I played basketball. I was pretty sweet, all right? So I was nice with it. Play basketball. Well, we would go into practice, and coach would give us a new play, right? I remember he gave us the 2-3. Two, 2-3, three. Two, three, I think it was one time, right? So it's a new play, and he said, I want you to just walk through the play. There was no defense, only the offense on the, on the court. And we would just walk through the play, right? We're just doing the play. And he would say, don't shoot the ball. He called that continuity. Don't shoot the ball, right? And so we would just be passing the ball around, passing the ball around, right? And we would do that for about 20 or 30 minutes. Then he'll say, stop. Then they'll say, all right, go down to the end of the court and give me the three-man weave, right? We just train it, right? We do the three-man weave. Go down. Then they say, give me some laps, right? Then we'll go down and just do the pass back. Then we might go and shoot some free throws, right? And then at the end of practice, with about 30 minutes left, 45 minutes left, he would say, let's scrimmage. Now, everything we did prior to scrimmaging was training. After we did the training, then we would scrimmage. That was literally practice. Okay, coach, what's the difference? When you're training, it's just you. You just, you know, you're going through motions, right? But practice looked like this. We run that same play again. We do continuity. And then he'll say, give me the defense. But the defense, you're just going to stand there. Don't try and stop the play. And y'all just passing the ball. The defense is standing there. Then he'll say, defense, stop them. And then the defense is trying to stop them. We still ain't shooting. Then he'll say, run the play, shoot the ball. Because there's a difference. When you're training without opposition, Things look real different and real easy. But when you're practicing and you got somebody or something in front of you that's going to stop you or give you a different uh, response, it causes you to make adjustments. So we would run the 2-3. When nobody was on us, we could just run the play. But when the defense came, based on what they gave us, we had to make adjustments. So this is what your training looked like as a speaker. I set up this thing. It's called the deck of cards. So you get yourself some index cards, and you put words on them. And you got these words. They're truth. And you do 60-second story and principle with these words, 60 seconds. And you just go through these words. Coach, where I get the words from? You get them from anywhere. These are simple words. Always get words that maybe a fourth grader can understand. Then you go up to an eighth grader. And I look at some of them eighth grade words. They're pretty hard. This is training, right? You're doing your 10-minute video. That's training. Coach, what does practice look like for a speaker? I tell everybody, go get three. Three what? Three gigs. Coach, why am I going to get three gear? Because I want you to go stand in front of people and you practicing your message. Now, why are you going to stand in front? Because you've been training. You've been doing your deck of cards. You've been training. You've been doing your video. But now I need you to get in front of an audience and they're going to respond or react. And you're going to have to know what to do. Because when you get out here and you're getting 10,000, 15,000, that ain't your time to practice. You've been training. Go practice. And then when you get in the game, you go get three. This is the game. Now you're getting paid. You ain't got time to be practicing while you're in the game. You practice at the free gigs with the second graders and the third graders. That's where you practice at. Coach, why am I going to get three? Why am I practicing? Because when you go get these three, it produces activity. Your activity produces opportunity. And that's why I tell people, you train, You practice. You go get three gigs. And then look, watch this. So they they say this. Coach, I got my three. What should I do now? Somebody tell me. What should I do now? What should I do now? Watch this. Go get three more. When does it stop? Never. Why do you keep telling me to go get three? Because I want you to get denied. I want you to know what it feels like to talk and ask for the gig. I want you to know what it feels like to send out a proposal. I want you to know what it feels like to send out a contract. Now, let me help somebody out. Just real talk. I get denied or declined for more gigs than I get accepted for. Does it bother me? No. Why? Because I'm always practicing. I'm always going to get three. And the more you practice, the better you get. Remember this. Activity leads to opportunity. Stay trained up and keep practicing. Y'all have a great grind day.